Welcome to the show, guys. This is Andre with Yup, I Said It. If this is your first time here, please like, share, subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. And if you could watch the video all the way through, that's a really big one. Um, so, you know, that's all important stuff. Now, look, Joe Biden has got some videos surfacing with his latest viral clips, okay? Um, but no matter what you see, um, no matter what your eyeballs see, it's just not true when it comes to Joe Biden. It's not really happening. You understand? Don't make me have to tell you again. All right. I don't care what you see Joe Biden doing. I don't care if you think he pooped his pants. It didn't really happen. Don't you understand that? Don't make me come and get you. All right. It's not real. Okay. It's not real. Stop pretending like you see stuff all the time. Who dare? How dare you act like? You see something with your eyes. How dare you sit there and act like somebody had to walk him off a stage. Somebody got to grab his hand. Do you know who he is? It's Joe Biden. All right. Greatest, greatest man who ever walked the earth. <laughs> okay. They are, look, they don't want you to believe any of this stuff, okay? Joe Biden has so many gaffes online. There's, I think YouTube would, they would probably have to hire an additional 800,000 people just to clear the internet full of the gas that Joe Biden uh, has had. It's crazy. All right, we're not supposed to believe that any of this stuff is happening. Come on, man. Like, that's the best you got? This is absolutely ridiculous, okay? I want to show you guys a couple of clips today. It's going to be a really good show. Thank you for tuning in. Watch all the way to the end. I got a really special story to be at the end. And I think everybody should know about it and... I want to offer, I want to do a prayer at the end, guys, seriously, uh, for a family. So please uh, wait until the end, um, and uh, we're going to take care of that. First clip here, okay? This is the one that they're saying never happened. I want you to look at this with your own eyes, and you tell me, is this Joe Biden, or is it AI or somebody? <laughs> There, there seems to be a, a sort of a rash of videos that have been edited to make the president appear officially frail or mentally confused. Um, I, I'm wondering if the, the White House is especially worried about the fact that this, this appears to be a, a, a pattern that we're seeing more of. Yeah, we, and I think you all have called this the cheap fakes video, and that's exactly what they are. They are cheap fakes video. Uh, they are done in bad faith. Uh, and, uh, and some of your news organization uh, have, uh, have been very clear, have stressed that these right-wing, uh, the right-wing critics of the president have a credibility problem uh, because of the fact checkers have repeatedly caught them pushing misinformation, disinformation, uh, and so we see this, and this is something coming from from your your part of the world, calling them cheap fakes and misinformation. Uh, and uh, I'll quote the Washington Post where they wrote uh, they wrote about this, and they said how Republican used misleading videos to attack Biden in a 24-hour period. And to their credit, we have a conservative Washington examiner uh, did call them out as well, calling out the New York Post. Uh, ironically, several, several recent chief fakes actually attacked the president for thanking troops for thanking troops, that is what they're attacking the president for. Both in Normandy this happened, and again in Italy. And uh, I think that it tells you everything that we need to know about how, um, how desperate, how desperate Republicans are here. Uh, and uh, instead of talking about the president's performance in office, and what I mean by that is his legislative wins, what he's been able to do for the American people across the country, we're seeing these deep fakes, uh, these manipulated videos. Lies, man, the lies. This woman is desperate. These people are absolutely desperate. They said the Republicans are desperate at this point. We don't know what to do with ourselves, you know. We're so desperate, we have to make up stuff about Joe Biden. Ain't nobody got to make up none of this, okay? Joe Biden's every day, all day, gaff, gaff, gaff. Every day, all day, pooping itself. Every day, all day, saying something stupid or something that just makes no sense at all. But this particular clip, this one, this one where Barack Obama has to walk him off stage and grab his hands like a toddler, that one's not real. It's unbelievable. It's absolutely unbelievable. We're not buying it, okay? <laughs> We're not buying what you're selling. We know Joe Biden is incompetent. We know that he's being controlled. We know literally Obama has to grab him by the hand and show him everything. Show him off the stage. 
it's sort of indicative of how he runs his campaign. Barack Obama's doing it. That's what my opinion is. It's absolutely crazy. So it's gotten so bad where the Democrat Party, now, if you've been paying attention, you knew that there's nobody else, literally. They, they don't have anyone else that could actually step up, whether that be from Congress, whether that be from another state, whether it be uh, Gavin Newscom. None of these people could run for president. Kamala Harris uh, would get smoked like a salmon, okay? She would never make it. She, they, nobody likes Kamala Harris, I'm sorry. They just don't. Um, only person worse than Kamala Harris, in my opinion, is Joe Biden. All right, so he doesn't stand a chance against Donald Trump, and everybody knows that. So it's becoming pretty apparent. And some of their people, like Jink Uger from the Young Turks, have been saying this for a long time, even though he's crazy, uh, like a drunk roach in a beer bottle. He's been saying this for a very long time, okay? But they ain't nobody been paying him no attention because <laughs> he tried to run. He tried to run for president. He's not even from this country. Why would anybody pay attention to somebody like that? Okay. Goodness gracious, man. The things, the videos that these people have out, and they don't, I don't think they really hear themselves when they talk. But sometimes they actually make a lot of damn sense, but nobody's listening on the left. You hear me? <laughs> but when do you think he's only three years younger than Biden? My God, I mean, the difference between the two of them. And as I thought, uh, Bill Ackman, the very good point he made, you know, Warren Buffett's in his 90s. And he doesn't sound anything like the way Joe Biden does. It's not about his age. It's about his yeah. mental acuity. And I just think, I tell, you when it's, I tell you when the chickens come home to roost for everybody trying to defend this or trying to make some equivalence with Trump. June the 27th, these two guys are going to get on a stage in a live television debate that will break all records, I think, for ratings probably around the world. And you know what's going to happen over 90 minutes, however long it is? Donald Trump is going to take Joe Biden to pieces and it's going to be utterly, utterly humiliating for the president because he has been protected so carefully in, in, his, in his term of office from yeah. this kind of thing. And when he gets exposed, yeah. honestly, Cheng, I think it's going to be utterly humiliating and Trump will destroy yeah. it. Well, well, Piers, there's a reason why the debate is historically early. The debates are never before the convention. I think the Democrats put the de debate before the convention so they'll have one last moment to try to talk Joe Biden out of this right. race. Because I, I look, I, I disagree with you slightly on Trump. I, I, I think he's always had the lowest IQ of any human being that's ever been in public. So, but I think he's lost a couple of points. So he went from like a 20 to a 15. He's way, way below Biden, but I get it. He looks energetic. Biden looks like, I mean, come on guys. The emperor has no clothes. Mm. They hate me for telling people that the emperor has no clothes, but my job is in news. We all can see how incredibly old he is. So my point is, for God's sake, pull him. If you don't pull him, we're going to lose to Trump. Why yeah. do you want to lose to Trump? Yeah. Why do you want to give up 10 points? Hate me all you want. And every Democrat says, it's my fault. It's people, oh, no, you shouldn't tell people reality. We, they already see it. You've got to pull him if you want to beat Trump. If you don't want to pull Joe Biden, you're saying, I don't mind losing to Trump. I don't mind losing democracy. All the things that I said about Trump, I don't actually mean it. I don't think it's a big deal if he wins. That's why I'm running this guy who cannot move or speak. It's absolute madness. Yeah. <laughs> Cheek yoga. I call him cheap yogurt. He said, they already see it. <laughs> yes, we already see it, Cheek. Tell him you better you better inform your base, okay? That, yeah, the emperor has no clothes, whatever that means. <laughs> it means that Joe Biden <laughs> is a skeleton or something. I don't know. Joe Biden is th this is crazy. I can't believe we're actually here in the United States of America and people are still having a hard time trying to determine who they want to vote for, Biden or Trump. And they tell you, you ain't black. <laughs> Bro, other countries are looking at us like, what the hell is going on there, okay? This is crazy. In Africa, they're hunting lions, <laughs> okay? In Russia, they get, by the way, in Russia, my wife just spoke to one of her cousins in Russia. Putin gives his people, like, land. He literally gives them land to live on, okay? Their phone bills are, like, $10 a month. 
Their uh, internet bills ten dollars a month. That's crazy. Okay, <laughs> their parks are beautiful. Like the people are so freaking happy over there. We actually have family there to confirm this. Wow. So yeah, that's what we're dealing with. Someone like Joe Biden. We're stuck until November. <laughs> if Trump don't win, I don't know what's gonna happen. Okay, I'm, <laughs> this is crazy. I can't believe we actually have to choose between Donald Trump or Joe Biden. If you told me uh, this, you know, 15 years ago, I would never believe you. But on a serious note, guys, like so, what Biden's presidency is causing a lot of problems, man. It, it really, it really is causing a lot of problems, and unfortunately, you don't really understand this um, unless you're really into politics. You've been keeping up, or you know, you just you have some t extra time to keep up. But most folks are just watching little news clips, shorts. Just you know, this, they don't have time to do anything else. The jobs keep them very busy. Everybody knows that, right? So our big job, our big duty is to get out and talk, man. We really have to talk to at least five, six people, you know, every day. I think. And that's, that might be a, a, a big goal, but I think it can be done. Absolutely. Uh, let's talk, talk to people about what's going on, especially illegal immigration. All right. Like, it's got to be the number one issue right now, man. It really is. And it's getting pretty bad. It, it's, it already has been bad. It has been bad in the past. It, it's, it's been bad for a long time. But right now, we're at a point where we absolutely can't tolerate it. We just can't tolerate it. We, we're, seeing, we're seeing a lot of things that are happening that are just absolutely horrible. Some awful things are happening close to home. Here's a story in Maryland. Lord rest this young lady's soul who was just going out for a jog when a person who was here illegally took her life, man. I am actually standing right at the entrance of the Ma and Pa Heritage Trail. Uh, this is a very popular hiking and running trail uh, in this area, in the Bel Air sector uh, outside of Baltimore. And this is the trail that Rachel Morin took on August 5th of 2023 uh, when somebody took her life as she was about a mile in there. Um, and as we've been talking about the arrest of the suspect on late Friday night, 23-year-old Victor Martinez Hernandez, uh, who came across the border illegally according to investigators has been charged he was he was found in Tulsa Oklahoma uh, as we've been reporting and now the battle has been on of who gets him first because he is accused of a murder in El Salvador uh, in early of last year he is accused of a home invasion and attacking a nine-year-old little girl and her mother in Los Angeles uh, at the beginning of last year then there's this big gap of time where we don't know where he was or what he was doing until August of last year where he's now accused in the brutal rape and murder of Rachel Morin here along this hiking trail. We have just learned from local authorities, Nicole, that he has waived his extradition. He was arrested in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Everybody's been wondering who he's going to go to first, and we've just learned that he's waived that extradition. That means that within the next 10, possibly more days, he could be coming here and he will be facing charges in the state. And that is exactly where people want him here that are connected to this case. That is exactly where the loved ones of Rachel Warren want him to be held accountable first before he is held on anything else. They want him to answer to those charges. Earlier today, I have been speaking with the father of Rachel Warren's oldest daughter. His name is Matt McMahon. Here's what he told me about the suspect. He's just a horrible person that needs to never set foot into a free world again. He needs to be behind bars his whole life. And I want him to live a very long life and hate every single second of that long life. All right, so we've also learned from local authorities that once the extradition is taken care of, um, the suspect will be brought back here and he will be held at a detention facility that's actually very close to this running trail. And I asked some details about how he was gonna be held and where. Uh, he will be held in this facility that holds about 300 other inmates and it is a minimum and maximum security facility. Uh, and then we'll get on to the court dates. But as you mentioned, and as we've been talking about, the immigration status is so important and we've learned from our border correspondent, Ali Bradley, that there are multiple offenses uh, of him crossing over our border multiple times. Uh, it does appear as though he came through in the El Paso sector. Uh, so we'll get some more reporting on that as we move along with these rapidly moving developments in this case. Uh, but a relief to the family members and loved ones of Rachel Morin that somebody has been caught. But of course, the question of, of why and how, why did this happen? And how long when he was on the loose, did he do anything else? Are there other victims out there? DNA 
DNA a very critical part of this investigation uh, and a hat tip to everyone involved because we know that there was a lot of legwork that went into this. A lot of uh, multi-agencies worked together to bring the suspect into custody in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So now we wait. Nicole. Such a very sad story. It really is a very, very sad story. That's right. That's not uh, too far away from where I live. You know, I'm from Maryland. And whether it was in Maryland, Texas, whether it was in, I don't care, Nevada, South Dakota, it, it doesn't matter. The problem is that we are allowing a lot of people here that shouldn't be here. And it's, it's just, it's so upsetting. You know, I'm, I don't want to let my wife go anywhere by herself, even with a firearm. Like, that's crazy. You know, so people shouldn't feel like this in their own country. You should never feel this way. Just know that other governments around the world, they don't all treat their people like this, man. We, we have gotten so lost and so off track here in our government that we don't know what, what it's like to live a good life anymore. The American dream is deteriorating. It really is because of the uh, migrant crisis, because of our government being corrupted. So I want to say a prayer for this young lady and her family. And I want you guys to join me if you have a moment. Um, yeah, we'd like to thank you for everything you're doing. Uh, but we are in trouble. And we're in trouble because a lot of times we turn away from you. And we turn away from your way. We know this country was founded uh, on biblical principles. And that's the reason why we've made it so far is because of your word. Help us to get back to you and become closer to you and that we would realize that you are in charge and that you love us and that you would always take care of us as long as we stay close to you. And the enemy's here and he's rolling around like a roaring lion looking for people to devour. That's literally in the scripture and we know it. Please protect us, protect our men and women, protect the children in our country. And around the world, for that matter, the global agenda has to come to a stop. We know that you see everything, especially if you number the hairs on our head. Please forgive our nation as we repent and come back to your way. In the name of Yahushua. Amen. Guys, thank you so much for joining my show. I really appreciate you. And we laugh and joke and we, you know, but it's really not funny. It really is not funny. There are real things at stake here and, you know, in any election, right? But the people on the left somehow want you to believe that their way is the right way. When it's not, it's not the way our country was built. It's not why we become so successful. It's not why we have so much innovation. The reason why we have that is because people stood for conservative values. They really did. And uh, anybody can disagree all you like. And, you, you know, you can disagree with me. But ultimately, we just want peace. You know, we, don't, we want to walk our streets safe. Now, if you grew up like me in a liberal neighborhood, if you grew up in East Baltimore, one of the worst neighborhoods in, in the world, then you would, you would understand this a lot better. See, people, I was just telling someone this on the streets today, that people don't read the Bible and you, they, get, they get angry as soon as you say the word Bible, you know, or as soon as you say Yahusha or Jesus, right? They get mad. But the, the one thing that they're missing is that God is revealing to us in the Bible how evil people actually operate and how bad it can really get. See, once you understand that, and not only that, if you read that, but if you, if you live through those kind of uh, times, and if you live in those kind of places where people are doing really heinous things, it hits you harder. It's hit me a lot harder than it would someone else who really doesn't understand. They can appreciate the kind of life that they live because they didn't have it so hard as a kid like I did. So that's why I'm passionate about this. And to, to YouTube, if you're watching, that's the number one reason why I'm passionate about this. It's because I had to live in a very hard life. And it was democratic socialism that kept people down in the neighborhoods. And I saw that firsthand. And the bad decisions that people made. Uh, and they're still suffering from it to this very day. Thank you so much, guys. This has been Yup, I Said It. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it.